Good morning, good morning, my brothers and my sisters. Welcome, welcome back to another Word of Encouragement, your health tip and a prayer with Dr. Deborah Williams, led by the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We thank God for his blessing upon his children on this earth. So let us go straight into our program and let us pray. Father, thank you for your love this amazing love that just runs us down father god so loved the world you said to us in your bible the holy writ that you gave your only begotten son a whosoever on this planet called earth should believe in jesus christ of nazareth shall not perish but have everlasting life oh father that's the blueprint of love love gives love forgives love comes after those who don't even know that they are being loved love attracts father we thank you for jesus we thank you for your holy spirit and thank you lord for your angels who are here on earth ministering unto us lord may you take full control of my mind and may you put a guard on my mouth and may jesus speak through me this morning one more time to encourage my brothers and sisters on the seven continents of the planet called earth as we share a word of encouragement, a health tip and pray for them. Bless us with your Holy Spirit. Seal us with your Holy Spirit, Father. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving and love. Amen. Brothers and sisters, ye shall receive power. We need power to overcome sin and that power comes to us. It comes to us through God's Holy Spirit. And we praise the Lord this morning. Jesus came over 2,000 years ago. He told the disciples, don't go until you get the promise the gift from my father which is the holy spirit the comforter holy spirit is on the earth he's been here ever since jesus made that declaration holy spirit is calling sinners to come over receive jesus christ receive redemption receive forgiveness of sins receive salvation and be justified through christ offering he paid the price for our sins and we're free in jesus whom the Son set free is truly free indeed. But God has stayed in the Bible so that we can be encouraged and we can be transformed because by beholding we become changed. Whatever we feed our mind on, that controls the mind. And feast on it. Feast on the Word so we can reflect what God wants us to reflect. His character on the planet called Earth. So this morning from our devotional, He shall receive power. I'm sharing with you april 22 theme not guided by emotions scripture psalm 119 psalm 119 verse 105 thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path sanctification is not a happy flight of feeling not the work of an instant but the work of a lifetime if anyone claims that the Lord has sanctified him and made him holy, the proof of his claim to the blessing will be seen in the fruits of meekness, patience, long-suffering, truthfulness, and love. If the blessing that those who claim to be sanctified have received leads them to rely upon some particular emotion, and they declare there is no need of searching the scriptures that they may know God's revealed will, then the supposed blessing is a counterfeit. For it leads, to, it, it leads its possessors to place value on their own unsanctified emotions and fancies and to close their eyes to the voice of God in his word. The reading goes on to say, why need those who claim they have special manifestations of the Spirit and the witness that their sins are all forgiven conclude that they can lay the Bible aside and from henceforth walk alone? Question. When we ask those who claim to have been instantaneously sanctified, if they are searching the scriptures as Jesus told them to do, to see if there is not additional truth for them to accept. They answer, quote, God makes known his will to us directly in special signs and revelations 
and we can afford to lay the Bible aside. End of end of quote. There are thousands who are being deceived by trusting to some special emotions and discarding the word of God. They are not building upon the only safe and sure foundation, the word of God, the holy writ, the scriptures, the Bible. A religion that is addressed to intelligent creatures will produce reasonable evidences of its genuineness for there will be marked results in heart and character the grace of christ will be made manifest in their daily conduct we may safely ask those who profess to be sanctified do the fruits of the spirit appear in your life question do you manifest the meekness and lowliness of christ and reveal the fact that you are learning daily in the school of Christ, shaping your life after the pattern of his unselfish life. Question. The best evidence that any of us can have of our connection with the God of heaven is that we keep his commandments. Now, brothers and sisters, we can't keep God's commandments of our own. But when we surrender our lives to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Quickening Spirit of God gives us the power to be God's children and aid us in keeping God's commandments. The best proof of faith in Christ is distrust of self and dependence completely upon God. The only reliable proof of our abiding in Christ is to reflect his image. And Jesus is the one that does that in us when we yield our will and our faculties to him. Just so far as we do this, we give evidence that we are sanctified through the truth. For the truth is exemplified in our daily life. Praise the Lord. The reading comes from the Signs of the Time, February 28, 1895 by Helen G. White. What is truth? Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? Truth is God's original idea. And to know what truth is, we have to study God's holy writ. Because when God placed his words through men in the book, 66 books of the Bible, God's revealed will is in the scriptures. And that is how we come to understand what truth is and what God expects of us. Jesus says, ask the Father for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth and he leads us in the pathway of righteousness. Now, I want to read a little more from Psalm 119. It's one of my favorite Psalms to read. As you see, the Psalm is being impressed by the Holy Spirit, spirit to respect God's statutes deliverance in god's words he, he just goes through from psalm 119 he talks about hope in god's words he talks about trusting in god's words he talks about the lord being on his side he talks about heeding to god's word as you go through psalm 1 119 he talks about idols of silver and gold the the, the psalmist psalm 119 highlights very clearly waiting on the lord choosing god's precept i want to look at psalm 119 and i'm going to go from psalm 119 101 down to 107 and the holy scripture of god says i have refrained my feet from every evil way that i may keep thy word i have not departed from thy judgments for thou hast taught me how sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. I have sworn, and I will perform it, that I will keep thy righteous judgments. 107 and last. I am afflicted very much. Quicken me, O Lord, according unto thy word. Praise the Lord. There ended the reading of a portion of God's holy word. And brothers and sisters, 
Brothers and sisters, I pray as you study the Bible that God will bless you with the blessings he has promised to those who will reverence him and who will keep his word as the apple of our eye, as our treasure, as our most important food. Jesus himself said in Matthew 4 and verse 4, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. And we know as Bible students that when Jesus made that quote in Matthew 4 and verse 4, after he had completed the 40 days of fasting and prayer in the wilderness on our behalf, Jesus made that declaration. He was quoting from Deuteronomy 8 and verse 3. Every time Jesus quoted the Bible, if you look at Matthew 4 and verse 10, the second time Jesus answered Satan, when he said, For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. He was quoting from Deuteronomy 6, 13, Deuteronomy 10, verse 20. Jesus came to live out the law because man had broken the law. Adam did that, and Eve in Genesis they broke the law of God and a human being have paid the consequences for God's broken law. God could have destroyed mankind, but he didn't. He sent his son to salvage us, salvation, <laughs> given free and clear redemption, buy us back what belonged to him in the first place. Re, take again, again, he bought us back. And so we celebrate salvation, redemption. We celebrate Pardon for, from sin. This is justification. Christ has imparted and imputed his righteousness to mankind. When Jesus came out of that tomb, brothers and sisters, after completing his father's work of redeeming us on the earth, holified, sanctified mankind came out of that tomb. Jesus Christ, the second Adam, has defeated Satan. And so we can walk in victory in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And when I say the name, I don't mean J-E-S-U-S, -S, just calling J-E-S-U-S. -S. I mean accepting Jesus, obeying the statutes, receiving the Holy Spirit, and reflecting the character of God. That is what it means to pray in the name of Jesus. You have surrendered yourself to Jesus, and he can now walk in you and be with you. He can be your God and you can be his child. Praise the Lord. We thank God for salvation through Jesus Christ, his son. Now, as we continue our journey, and we're going to be looking now at our health tip. Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for all that he achieved for us on the earth. We thank you, Lord, for every blessing with which you have blessed mankind. Now may you, Heavenly Father, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Seal us with that spirit of promise, Lord. May you turn us away from darkness, ignorance, and turn us to Jesus Christ, the light and the life of mankind. Thank you, Abba Father, for your love, your blessing, and your mercies. In Christ's name we pray. Thank you for the herbs. As I share with the listeners now the health benefits that you have placed in these herbs, the properties to keep us healthy. Because, Father, in your word you said, Psalm 104, verse 14. You said the herbs are the service of mankind. We thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. For our health tip, we're going to be looking at uh, three herbs this morning. I'm going over to Ella. Ella. Um, lemon balm, licorice root, and lobelia. L-O-B-E-L-I-A. Lobelia. All right. So for lemon balm, the part of the herb that we use is the top part of it. Um, everything that comes out of the ground, not the root, but the top part, right? The leaves, the stem, the bark. The, the impact on the body from this particular herb is on the nerves and the circulation system in the body. Now, internally, lemon balm is a, is a specific herb that we tend to use for children and infants when they are suffering from colds and flus or fever. How do we make the herb? For the children, we take one teaspoon of the dried herb to eight ounces water. We let it um, simmer very low heat for about two minutes. Turn off the stove. Let it steep for five minutes. And then we strain it off. Now, if the child is above one year of age, you can add one teaspoon of honey to it. Because we don't give honey to children under one. Uh, 
we sweeten the, the tea with honey and give it to the child, right? Um, lemon balm is frequently used to cure melancholy and uh, depression induced sicknesses for adults. It is also good for um, cholera, um, cholera, sorry, I said cholera, cholera, insomnia, epilepsy, headaches, nervous indigestion, and hepatitis impacting the liver so the lemon balm also comes in liquid form and it comes in capsule if you go to the health food store and you get the lemon balm in in liquid form you just take a half teaspoon to two ounces of water and if your child is suffering from cold or flu or fever you just mix it half a teaspoon in four ounces of warm water and give it to them twice a day if it's an adult you can use two teaspoons of it in four ounces of warm water twice a day while you are taking out of your diet all the unhealthy things that's, that's depressing and um, impacting negatively your immune system. Because if your immune system is high, your body will defend you from the attack of viral and bacterial infections. Now for the licorice root, we use the root in this plant. It is good for in the body, the lungs, the stomach, the intestine, the spleen, and the liver. Internally, licorice is primarily used for bronchial problems, for coughs and colds, for hoarseness, mucus congestion, and other similar problems. It can also be taken for stomach problems like peptic ulcers and bladder and kidney ailment. We can add bitter herbs to the licorice. For example, you have rice bitters, you have cascara sagrada because licorice root tend to have a sweet taste so it helps to calm down these bitter herbs so it's more um it's more it's easier for you to tolerate them it is excellent for all kinds of stomach and intestinal ulcers it will help to fight inflammation and viral bacterial and parasitic infection it is excellent also for colds and flus and lung congestion uh, licorice is used by many companies they add it to cough syrups to make it sweet it cleanses the colon so i use it with my patients but i'm doing detox with them it cleanses the colon reduces muscle spasm increases the fluidity of of uh, mucus in the lungs and bronchial tubes licorice is a mild laxative and is effective for adults and um for older children not the babies but the older ones above 12. it helps to inhibit the formation of plaque and prevents bacteria from sticking to your teeth right for hoarseness and throat problem combine it with sage herb ginger right and that will also help you if you're having an issue with your throat or hoarseness we spoke about the sage herb recently and we know ginger is a stimulant herb so we combine it with other herbs it helps the body to absorb it faster licorice root is useful for asthma for allergies for chronic fatigue um, for persons who are having issues with depression enlarged prostate uh, fever hypoglycemia so the blood sugar is too high um, and it's also very good for glandular infection use it for inflammatory bowel disorders premenstrual syndrome and menopause symptoms a strong decoction meaning you're going to boil it uh, makes a good laxative also for persons who are suffering from constipation and it will also help to reduce fever we can add it to other herbal uh, medicines and use it um, again as i said it makes them more digestible easier to digest uh, licorice it is useful for upper respiratory tract infections it protects against um, atherosclerosis licorice stimulates the production of um, persons who are suffering from issues with hiv so it will help with interferon and may inhibit the replication of this particular virus there is also evidence that it may prevent hepatitis C from causing liver cancer 
and cirrhosis of the liver. Now, please remember, listeners, even though we're reading out all of this from the encyclopedias about herbs, herbs by themselves will not change all of this. You have to make sure you turn the cause off because even as I'm reading now and I'm looking at these diseases in this encyclopedia I'm reading from, we got to remember, as many persons will hear the presentation and go and buy the herb while they haven't changed their diet. And so they're taking all it, the meat and the processed meats and the junk food and they're taking the herbs and they're saying it doesn't work. It will work if you allow it to work by changing your diet and lifestyle and obeying the Lord, right? Obeying God's ordinances, his commandments and his statutes. Don't forget Exodus 15 verse 26. God says in Exodus 15 verse 26, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right and will obey his commandments and all his statutes. God says, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. So the herbs go in conjunction with us taking care of our bodies um, and allowing the Lord to heal us. First Corinthians 10, 30, verse 31. Therefore, whatever you eat and whatever you drink and all that you do, do to the honor and the glory of God. So remember, as you use the herbs, New Start, the acronym New Start from the book, The Ministry of Healing by Helen G. White, right? The chapter is called The Physician and Educator. And we use the acronym New Start because it's easy to remember the eight laws of health. Nutrition, a whole food, plant-based diet, exercise, water, sunlight, temperance, air, rest, and trust in God. We call it the eight laws of health. Now, please remember when it comes to licorice, you, um, if you are suffering from diabetes, glaucoma, heart disease, hypertension, or had a stroke in the past, you are not to take licorice unless you are under the guidance of a trained naturopathic physician like Dr. Deborah Williams or others. So if you are suffering from these illnesses and you want to see the healing using natural remedies, just simply call my office. It is 876-878-8867. 876-326-4650 or 876-306-4280. Or you can email us at admin, admin at mylifehealthfoods.com. Go to my website, www.mylifehealthfoods.com deborah williams ja.com and all the contact information is at the website okay now the third herb for today is lobelia no i didn't tell you how to make the licorice tea so let's go back a little bit now if you're going to use the licorice and you want to make the tea generally we take one tablespoon of the dried herb to eight ounce of water you're going to boil that for about 15 minutes, very low heat. So when you're boiling roots, you have to boil them a little longer, right? For about 15 minutes, very, very low heat. Turn the stove off and let it steep for another 15 minutes. The tea can be consumed at room temperature. It doesn't have to be hot because after 15 minutes of steeping, it's going to be at room temperature. But if you want a warm cup of tea, you can warm it back up. It also comes in tincture form, right? You can take about 30 drops of that, which is about one teaspoon. And you mix it in two ounces of warm water and have it two or three times per day. It comes in capsule form, powdered capsule form. You can take, you know, five to ten of the capsules per day. Um, and you always take your herbs about 10 to 15 minutes before you eat your food, right? You want them to get down in the stomach and start doing their work before you add food to the stomach. Now, the last herb now is lobelia. We use the the actual full plant or we can use the seeds of the lobelia um what is it good for in terms of affecting the body the nerves the lungs the stomach your muscles and circulation of blood in the body now the lobelia internally it is good for muscle spasms it helps to relax the muscles right both internally and externally it is good for lung congestion and uh, lobelia is also helpful for persons who are suffering from asthma or whooping cough. It is an outstanding herb for relieving um, spasms associated with lung and respiratory conditions. As an expectorant, it is useful for all respiratory treatments, especially um, persons who are having excessive phlegm coming up, right? Um, add it also to cold um, medicines that you make at home. Right, so you can combine the lobelia with the lemon balm, for example. 
um, combine it with the ladies, the herb is called ladies slipper for convulsions. Lobelia is also useful for headaches, for heart palpitation, indigestion, allergies, arthritis, asthma, chicken pox, contagious diseases, fever of all kinds, jaundice, a pneumonia, teeth, um, teething issues, toothache. It relaxes the heart and lowers rapid pulse. Combined with another herb called skull cap and the same lady um, slipper, S-L-I-P-P-E-R, lady slipper. It is good for locked jaw. Um, now, in large doses, it is an invaluable herb for clearing stomach problems and just cleaning out the contents of the stomach. Lobelia is good for food poisoning also. In small doses internally, Lobelia is a wash for infected or itchy skin diseases, right? It is put in bath, uh, fomentations, poultice, um, liniments for muscle spasms. A small, um, small drops of the tincture placed in the air will relieve air aches. It is used in poultices for bruises, for sprains, for wingworm, poison ivy, snake, or insect bites. Lobelia is also very good for sore muscles, for pain, and rheumatism. Now, please remember, if you're going to use um, the lobelia in a large dose, you have to be guided by a trained naturopathic physician, somebody who knows the herbs and how to administer them to you uh, safely so we thank the lord for his herbs and we thank the lord for giving us the wisdom in terms of how to use them safely father thank you once again for the herbs on planet earth in ezekiel 47 verse 12 the word of god says you have given us the fruit for our meat and the leaf of the trees for our medicine we thank you for the blessing of the food the herbs the water we thank you, Lord, for the sunlight. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you have placed on this earth. We thank you, Lord, for taking care of us and for being our Abba Father. Thank you for your darling son, Jesus, who is now the last Adam, the one who takes such personal care of us individually and collectively on planet earth. Father, may your name be glorified, magnified, and exalted. As your Holy Spirit is going out throughout the whole entire earth, calling your children back to safety, calling your children back to the kingdom. Oh, Heavenly Father, there is nothing that you have left undone to save us from the claws of Satan and his demons. But we have to ensure that we stay in obedience to you and allow Jesus Christ to do his marvelous work of preparing us for his soon return. This is our prayer with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, remember, stay in the word of God, the Holy Scripture. Study to show thyself approved. You want to know the will of God? Study the will of God. He has, he has revealed it all in the Bible. And the Holy Spirit is here to help us to understand. So never read your Bible without praying first and asking the Holy Spirit to give you enlightenment so you can understand what God is trying to say to you as his darling, redeemed child. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. And remember, Maranatha, Christ is coming soon. Be ready for his return. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day from Dr. Debs.